Also bloody ridiculous, I might say, is the Prime Minister's unhealthy preoccupation with a thing called the Christchurch Call. Jacinda Ardern is currently at the United Nations where all the world's leaders are having their post-COVID get-together after years of being isolated. Um, as we know, Jacinda Ardern threw, flew there with uh, Trudeau, was it? Macron, Trudeau, I, I get them mixed up. Um, she threw the, flew there with Trudeau and there's been a meeting around the Christchurch call. And what is the Christchurch call? Well, I suppose if I could interview the Prime Minister or anyone associated with it, I'd, I'd have a better idea. But he, here's what my impression is. The Christchurch call is an online censorship response in conjunction with some of the big social media players supposedly coming out of the terrible mosque massacre in Christchurch. Um, and it is de designed to deny people who have bad, violent thoughts, deny them the ability to share their bad, violent thoughts on certain forms of social media. And this supposedly will stop a repeat of the act of terror that Brenton Tarrant supposedly perpetrated. Um, I'm just going to say Brenton Tarrant was not convicted of terrorism. He was convicted of mass murder. Uh, a royal inquiry found that he acted alone. He was not part of a terrorist group. He did not have a cohesive terrorist philosophy. He was a nutter, in short, with a gun. We took uh, action in this country to restrict... Uh, and, in fact, we had adequate laws in this country to stop Brenton Tarrant getting a gun... Uh, we simply, the police simply did not uh, enforce those laws properly. So I do not see personally how the Christchurch call is going to make a m blind bit of difference in reducing the risk in future of a nutter with a gun who is socially isolated, spends too long at the gym and hasn't got his head together from doing what Brenton Darrant did. Yet it seems that whenever the Prime Minister is overseas, the so-called Christchurch call is front and centre. One politician who may think the same as me but has come out against the obsession with the Christchurch call and I must say has got a kicking on social media from the left-wing trolls as a result is the leader of the ACT Party, David Seymour, and he joins us on the platform now. David, a very good morning to you. Good morning, Sean. All right. What, to your mind, is the Christchurch call why is the Prime Minister constantly banging on about it? Uh, look, I think it's the Prime Minister doing what she does best. Uh, it's taking a major event um, and getting a lot of publicity out of it. Frankly, I think it's morally reprehensible um, to use the killing of 51 people, you know, one, of the, one of the worst events in New Zealand history, um, to basically continue to grandstand and I say grandstand because uh, the, these are highly technical matters and, and very difficult ethical matters. Uh, you know, how social media works and what its roles and responsibilities to society are. Um, and people all over the world are grappling with them. And along comes this woman from New Zealand um, who is only engaged or getting any attention because in her country there was a terrible tragedy. Uh, she, she's not adding any new insights. It's not as though the videos weren't taken down, uh, you know, as fast as humanly possible. And taking those videos down faster uh, would be a technical matter uh, that no doubt they've worked on and will continue to work on. Uh, so she's not adding any value. She's just taking the attention. Uh, and to do that off the back of 51 people dying, I think it's disgraceful. But you're not allowed in the current climate without being um, pilloried for it to say that, David, because this was a terror attack and people feel bad about it. So what right do you, well, have you got to even comment? Well, I feel bad about it too, and, and that's one of the reasons that um, ACT has a policy to properly uh, replace the Arms Act and get the right balance between stopping bad people from having firearms but also allowing... Uh, licensed firearm owners who actually are of good character. Hello. We well, seem to have a slight issue there, David. If you're still on the line, just hold there. Kelly, David seems to have stopped. We seem to have had... It's an illusion. Ah, we had brought you back. Um, 
David, what about the reporting of this? Because it seems to me that whoever it is in the press gallery who goes overseas with the Prime Minister swallows this hook, line and sinker pretty well. And we do have a common narrative, and, and I come back to my opening comments, this was not a terror attack, it was mass murder. He wasn't convicted of terrorism. We didn't find a terrorism cell. We didn't find a coherent list of demands. But the rantings of someone who, who why not, while not didn't meet the threshold for criminal insanity, is clearly a nut bar. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. He didn't meet the threshold for criminal insanity. Now you mention it, the guy was, as you say, he was clearly a nut bar. Look, I, I don't know. You call it terrorism, call it mass murder. It's a terrible event, uh, and we should be looking for ways to stop things like that happening in the future. Uh, it's just not obvious how this Christchurch call is doing that other than getting the Prime Minister some attention in a, a global debate that's very sophisticated that she wouldn't be included in uh, were it not for the fact that she's from a country where a terrible tragedy happened. And, and for that reason, I think it's just absolutely uh, horrific. Do you think it is also part of a growing trend um, for censorship and for monitoring of people's utterances and thoughts in the modern world? Well, I think it's interesting that the internet and you know things like the platform uh, are a threat to the nation state. Uh, the nation state formed to dominate limited geographical areas and it could control what sort of communication and so on uh, people had within those areas. Um, and so you know I, 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 can, I can understand why the nation state, why governments such as the government of New Zealand um, and, you know, especially the ones in the European Union, it seems, are uh, very intimidated by the internet and the fact that it allows information to cross borders and there's very little they can do about it. So it's not surprising that they're trying uh, to get back the levels of censorship that they've traditionally had over broadcast media, radio, TV and newspapers that existed within their borders. Um, but they're having a much harder time of it because in many instances, uh, you know, these online platforms are much bigger than they are. Well, we're hoping to get there, David, though I might add a, a disclaimer here. I'm not looking forward or I'm not trying to through the platform. We are not trying to bring down or bring to an end the nation state of New Zealand. All right? I just oh, want to make well, that very... A disappointment. I wouldn't have come on if I... <laughs> <laughs> if I realise, if I realised uh, that you, I uh, realised that you weren't that ambitious. Yeah, um, David, you have been slammed on Twitter as you were trending uh, on Twitter, or you are trending on Twitter for actually coming out and having the temerity to question the Christchurch call, scratch your head, and say, "What, what the hell is all this about?" Um, do you appreciate this? Might be because of the emotion, and I would say the emotional manipulation in the news media, this is an unpopular position to take for many New Zealanders. Oh, look, it's, it's the first I've heard of it. I don't go on Twitter. Um, one of my staff members loves Twitter and loves arguing, so he's been doing it for the last five years and some idiots have been arguing with him, thinking they're arguing with me. I, I wouldn't have a clue. Uh, <laughs> so if they're getting upset on Twitter, then that's just a shame. I had a great day yesterday and I'm going to have a great day today. All right, what should the Prime Minister do instead of concentrating on the Christchurch call when she's on a trip like her current um, sojourn to the United Nations? Oh, well, um, how long you got? Look, I think one of the most obvious things is you need to work out how to stop these robberies. I'm not, I'm not going to call them ram raids anymore. They are robberies uh, and they need to be stopped and there are things that could be done to stop them, uh, but it's not getting any of her attention. Uh, it's not even clear... Uh, if the meagre assistance the government has offered uh, is getting to the people who are the victims. Uh, so that would be a good start if she wants to stop violence and people feeling unsafe in New Zealand. Um, instead, uh, she had her Deputy Prime Minister, currently the Acting Prime Minister, uh, saying that members of Parliament feel unsafe. Really? Well, get a bit of that from time to time, but nothing like what those people working in jewellery stores are waking up to today, the fear that they face. Um, and I guess having done that, uh, she could do something like what ACT proposed in our alternative budget. Uh, if we keep running the same fiscal and monetary policy that we're running now, I predict inflation will carry on well into next year and mortgage rates um, are going to keep going up because I don't think Adrian Orr's won the battle. 
I don't think he's been taken seriously, and we're going to keep carry on with a wage price spiral that is going to really, really badly. It's going to hurt a lot of people. Uh, and yet, you know, the Prime Minister's overseas talking about the Christchurch call that no one can even define. All right, look, a couple of other things I'd like to, to run past you as, as, as we've got you here. It is uh, 18 months since the last school climate strike. What is your message to, we are told, by a compliant mainstream media, the thousands of school children who, often with the support of their teachers, are going to wag school for the afternoon to say, save the planet, it's burning? Well, it's it's Friday and uh, kids are being offered the afternoon off and they're taking it. I mean, there's nothing new under the sun. Um, what does worry me is the pressure that has been put onto young children. Uh, they're being told that you know the planet really is burning and their future is pretty grim because uh, if they're lucky, there'll be a bit of space for them in between the rising waters and the burning planet above. Um, and if I believe that sincerely, I, I don't. I'm a, a bit more, um, you know, reserved about the whole thing. But if I believe what these kids are being told, I would be exceedingly upset. And I think one of the reasons a lot of kids are upset uh, is because they have the weight of the world put on their shoulders and they're told the world's going to end. So, you know, whether kids kids always take an afternoon off school if they can and, you know, good on them, I would too if, uh, when I was a kid. But um, what I am worried about is the way that we're putting all this pressure on them and uh, I think it's leading to a lot of harm. I'm also worried about the fact that when they do go to school, they're not getting much learning either. Uh, and I think that's one of the reasons we've got a persistent problem uh, with truancy is that not just this afternoon but frequently is that kids are smart they know when something's not the real deal um, and they know that getting sent along put in an innovative learning environment a big barn with four teachers and a hundred kids um, is actually not real learning and not really valuable so they don't go so you, you know I, I'm, I'm more relaxed about kids taking an afternoon off but we've got some big long-term problems that we need to solve uh, un, 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 as an undercurrent. Uh, David, finally, we have, and I don't know why it's taken so long, um, and, and we have for us, since we have Chris Luxon on the programme live, all in about um, 20 minutes' time between 7.30 and 8. Um, is there anything you'd like me to ask him? Because I just know you haven't had a cup of tea yet, and I'm just wondering if you had a... A chance to stick well, stick a question on Chris Lux and what it would what would it be? Um, look, actually, Chris and I have been getting together, and um, oh, yeah. you know we're we're working together on you know what it looks like to form a, a cohesive plan with two parties in government. Um, so you know we 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 get on well. Um, look, I've I've I'll give you a question. I mean, you know, all the policy stuff we can debate. But I actually really want to know, um, does he swim and does he wear a swimming cap? <laughs> because you see, I'm interested. I mean, it's not really going to make any difference to his hydrodynamics. Um, but he might have one just to fit in or um, to keep his head warm. I so actually I'm, see where, that's my sort of question. I'm annoyed I didn't come up with that question. Yeah, well, it's been bothering me, and I thought about asking him in person, but I just thought there might be a better opportunity like this. <laughs> All right, I will ask that question if I have the courage, if I can pluck up the courage, I will ask that tell, question tell, on, on, on your behalf. At Olympic, not so far from his house, and uh, he's welcome to come one morning. Okay, do you swim, David? Absolutely. And do you wear a cap? No, I'm not that serious. Okay, I hear that. Hey, thank you very much indeed uh, for your time this morning. That is the leader of the ACT Party, David Seymour. He's given me the most yep. probing question he could find for Chris Luxon. That is, do you swim? And if so, do you wear a swimming cap? We're asking all the tough ones this morning here on the platform. <laughs> it is 23 minutes past seven.